In the words of the not late, you say late when they're dead, right? Like, yeah, late is when they've been okay. killed. In or the words died. of the early Elon Musk, the bird is free. Did you see that quote from him? No, I didn't see that. He officially uh, has taken over Twitter. I saw that he bought the company and then he f- immediately fired like the CEO, the CF. Like, can you imagine your They're company gone, gets though, bought? Yeah. You don't even like the new owner doesn't even know you and they just immediately fire you. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. He, I guess he knew enough. Uh, but he did his uh, due diligence. Yeah. Um, but I was cracking up. Because he's like kind of a known troll. He posts stuff on Twitter, whatever. But he had to post the most. If you know you were getting fired the next day, but you scrolled on Twitter to see the guy that's going to do it, he came in with a physical sink. I saw that. And he put, I am now the CEO. I'm now in Twitter headquarters CEO. Let that sink in. Yeah. Well, like but that guy's going to fire you. You're done. Yeah. And well, how awkward for like the administrative assistant running the front door. Let me buzz this guy in to go fire my <laughs> boss. Like, you know, it's very bizarre. Yeah, they, they let the sink in. Very bizarre. Uh, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. I don't know. So the bird is free. Um, the Dweebros channel, we are still owned and operated by ourselves. Yes. For now. Until Elon Musk buys us. Brings in a sink into your house. Yeah. Let that sink I mean, for in 54 and billion, fires you and me. For 54 million or billion or whatever that was. If he gives us a gold parachute, we can sell on the channel. Yeah. We'll just start the We Bros podcast. Yeah. There'll only be <laughs> one seat here. So. Yeah. Uh, but until then, you have joined C- the two CEOs. Can you have two CEOs? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you be the... Dual CEOs. Dual CEOs. Yeah. We're so, we're so good how, at it, we need two of them. You know how, like, the, the Duffer brothers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they're they, they're four CEOs. They don't say, like, I'm the director and you're the co-director. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, uh, we should also talk about... Both uh, CEOs. We are right missing here. a third CEO, and that's Jacob. He's coming back soon. He's on sabbatical. He's on sabbatical. He's on a... CEOs take sabbatical. When you have three CEOs, one of them can take a break. Yes. So that's where Jacob is. If you have been watching, hey, what's the scoop on Elon? What's the scoop on Jacob? Now you know Jacob's going to be back. He has to be back for the end of the year award. Yeah, he'll be back. We do a yearly kind of uh, look back and recap of the year. But that is where he is. But for now, the two CEOs are running the ship. Yeah. The two captains here uh, until we get our... (laughs) Um, you know, you know, there's a saying. So I'm really big, big into football, like quarterbacks, and yeah. they always say, if you got two quarterbacks, you don't have a quarterback. Because <laughs> every year, there's a couple teams that are like, we've got two, and yeah. we're going to do a competition, and they're like, if you got two, you got none. <laughs> like, if you got to have a competition, you don't have a dude. But that's not true for CEOs. You can have two CEOs. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, Elon's there's only one CEO there right yeah. now, but we'll see what's uh, what's going to happen. But. Uh, yeah, welcome. We talk. If you, this is your first time, I am Zach, a.k.a. Dweebo, a.k.a. the bird that got set free. And I'm joined by... I am Travis, and I am also... Uh, I've been uncaged. Yes. Despite all your rage, we are still just rats in a cage. But I've been uncaged. Yeah. So despite all our ra- your rage, I'm still just a rat that's out of his cage. Yes. That's, you know, how I sing it. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. But welcome. Uh, welcome, and that's why I wanted to introduce, because you might be new. I put out a new video. Let's get, can we get straight into that? I put out a new video this month. I Actually, saw that, the week, mall. This past week, we went to an abandoned, semi-abandoned, hanging on by a thread abandoned mall. I won't go into super detail, but if you saw that video... Hey, thank you. Like that video. Check that out if you haven't already. That is a local Cincinnati mall. Um, I recently did uh, the other mall around us called the Tri-County Mall, which was uh, they gave a date. They said, hey, we're putting out these, you know, we're, we're closing her down. This other mall is like freaking Mad Max. And we actually mm. saw Mad Max there for you. Remember? Yeah, we did watch Mad Max. <laughs> That's probably the last movie I ever watched there. Yeah, uh, yeah. we talked about that. But check that out. It's a weird, liminal, crazy space yeah. there because it shouldn't be. You shouldn't be able to walk in there. But we, we had some. We running. did a podcast from there once. Yes, and I, I talked about. We went and had to go back to that spot, and we had to stay there because 
Security found us on a bike, and it was kind of uh, crazy to try to record the rest of that because yeah. we got caught by security in the beginning of the video um, to the point where we were joking. Uh, I said at one point, I was like, I don't know if it's in the video, or I told uh, Brian, who's in the video afterwards, I said, I feel like this is a, you get two lives, and if you get caught once, you can only get caught one yeah, more time. You can only restart once. You cannot uh, do <laughs> another time. So we got caught once Game pretty soon over. on. Who, who did you do the video with? Uh, is Brian of Review the World. Is he the CEO of Review the World? Yes, he okay. is absolutely the CEO. So two of CEOs in that video yeah. as well. Man, it's just a, it's a lot of um, just smart minds coming together yeah. to make yeah. those videos, if I do say so myself. But check out that video. It's like an hour long. We talk memories and stuff there, and we show off the mall where I can. I have to pull out like a freaking spy phone, and I had to just – I had to keep – if you watch at one part, I go back to that food court that we did the podcast yeah. on. And if you see me, my, eye is, my eyes are darting the whole time Brian, <laughs> Brian's talking. It looks like I'm not listening to Brian, but I am. I'm just – this guy is on a bicycle. And in the video, I won't spoil it, but he is like circling us, trying to find out where if we're recording. Kind of, but it was kind of fun. It was. Yeah. It felt like a video game. Yeah, like, I was like, gonna say it sounds kept, like he was like on like you know hard mode, like he yes. was trying to find. It, you. it felt like Nemesis. I even said that during the video. I was like, it feels like Nemesis is hunting us down. What are you do. doing in here, boys? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we had to just keep moving around because this guy is on a bicycle in a mall. Oh, that's trying crazy. to find us and trying to kick us out. But uh, check that out. Um, and thank you if you if you're joining from that and checking this video out. Welcome. Welcome. But that is all the abandoned mall news that we have. But we talk other things. We also talk video games and video games we've been playing. What have you been playing lately? Well, I played three games from one series, but then I played a different game that's not from that series. So I'll start with the one that's not from that series. Let's get into the series. Batman Arkham City. Okay. I talked about it a little bit last time. I beat it. Um Pretty rare that I finish a game and I'm like, I want to do the DLC. I want to do that game was really something. I thought it was really good. I never played it back when it came out, 2011. I played Asylum. I talked about it last week. If you if you want last month, if you want more of my thoughts on Arkham City's gameplay and all that, I talked quite a bit about it. But really good game. I think I'm gonna play one of those a, a year. I, I think mm. that that's the model. I got a big backlog. I yeah. can't sit here and just play Batman games all year. Yeah. But I did Asylum a couple of years ago. did City. I think next year I'll do Origins. Do oh, or Origins. Do Origins. Oh, okay. I, think. I never played Origins. Yeah. I've heard it's kind of like City again, but mm -hmm. it takes place in the past. But okay. I've heard mixed things, but I'm going to check it out. Okay, so cool. Batman, Arkham City, thumbs up. All right. I like that one. Let's talk about that. So when I finished Arkham City, I've been kind of going through games I started but never finished and kind of just doing a value judge. Do I want to finish this game? Is yeah. this worth my time to finish it? And I've got this list on my phone. So I finished Arkham City. It was like a four-year-old save file. So I was like, cool, thumbs up. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, then I was like, okay, I have a save file I've been avoiding on Resident Evil 7. Oh, and it's, You've had a tough time getting through and that. And it's spooky season. Yeah, I started Resident Evil 7 in like tw uh, the probably the year it came out mm -hmm. or maybe the year after it came out. It's been a few years. I started it a couple of years ago. And um I was like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to do this. I don't know. I just got a I got the mm -hmm. what do you call it? the gumption. I just got the yeah. got myself it's, psyched up. It's and spooky mood. Uh, it's spooky, spooky mood. mood. Spooky that game is so terrifying and so I picked up my old save file, which is always hard in a survival yeah. game because you're like, where am I? I don't like doing that for what any What do game. I have? I have a rule. If I've got a file that like I even remotely remember what was happening, You'll stick I'll with stick it. with it because I don't have the time to just keep restarting crap over. And I over I again. get that. I just I cannot yeah. I couldn't mentally do it because I have to relearn the controls. <laughs> like, I don't know what the context. I'll go in and see a cut scene. I'm like, who's this guy? Yeah. Oh, I forgot him. Yeah. Like, no, exactly. Oh, I forgot. I have another game I'll talk about after these games. But um, Resident Evil 7 picked it up again. I was on what's called the old house, which uh, is in the old, whole thing, an old house. Well, there's the mansion, there's the old house, there's the testing room, which is like a oh, saw shoot. type place. Okay. There's a boat and there's assault mines. The old house is where that lady is, and mm. she her limbs grow out like a big like spider. Oh my she gosh. crawls around and chases you. Um, I gutted my way through that. I just loaded up on flamethrowers and stuff, and uh, and I got through it. And then from there, that game's pretty smooth sailing. I mean, there's a couple more jump scares, but the scariest parts in that game are front loaded. So mm -hmm. I finished Resident Evil Seven. 
Uh, thumbs up. Very good game. I go back and forth. I like eight better because it's more my aesthetic, mm-hmm. but I think seven respects your time a little bit better. Whereas eight, the back half of that game has some areas that aren't my favorite and they're kind of long. Mm-hmm. Seven, again, has areas towards the end that aren't my favorite, but they're so short. So you spend most of your time mm-hmm. in the good areas of seven. Better paced. Better paced. I'd say seven probably has a little bit of better pacing. I will say, though, eight, I like the combat better. So many more different enemy types. It's more like Resident Evil 4. So um, I uh, I don't know. I, I like both of those. I still give it a little bit to Village. But uh, seven, good game. Cool. So I finished seven, and we're getting close to Halloween here. Like, it's in a couple days. And uh, I you're probably, you're probably watching this on Halloween, because if I edit this on time, it'll be up on Monday. Spooky, so, okay, great. Halloween. Happy Halloween. Halloween episode. So... Then I, like, remembered this isn't the only Resident Evil game I started and never finished. I started Resident Evil 6, or Resident Evil uh, Remake. Okay. Old one. I started that back in 2017. The Resident Evil 1? 1. Oh, okay. The remake. So the you, GameCube, went, you went back to the start. The GameCube remake. I have it on Steam. And so I was like, okay, I want to... I just played 7, which is kind of the return to form. Let mm-hmm. me go play 1. And I'm... I'm playing one right now. I'm okay. about I'm about halfway through it, a little over halfway. Um, now I've always heard that game is a masterpiece. I totally see all that it is, but it does have things about it that are frustrating. You only have like six item slots, yeah, and they're giving you key items and health and guns, and so over half of my playtime is running back and forth between the save box to drop stuff off, and then in this game, you can't save in the save room. Mm-hmm. There's ink ribbons, which are consumables. Yeah, and you have to consume those. you have to consume them yeah. to use them. So I am like, I, I've gotten a little bit further, and I've looked up how many ribbons you get. That way I at least understand, and I think I'm pacing them out okay. But it just creates, I understand that the tension is the goal, but it almost feels like I have to save. And then when I save, it's like run around and just look at everything, die a bunch of times. It's almost like a Souls type thing. Like run around, figure it all out, and then start again and do it the most optimal way. It's like you learn how to speed run that game, then you stop, and then you go speed run it. Because you got mm. some limited ammo, limited saves. So I'm enjoying it, but um, it's a little bit too much meta gaming for me in that way. Yeah. I think those games get better after you've beaten them once. Cause then it's like, how do I do this the fastest way? You look up the how long to beat on these games, they're all like eight hours. These are not eight hour games. <laughs> these are like 15 hour games if you don't know what you're if doing. If you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And uh so so I'm liking it, but it's hard um for sure. But it, it's very good and very atmospheric. So Resident Evil, I'm liking it so far. And then I have a game that I hadn't started, but I was like, I'm already in such a Resident Evil mood. I've played some of the new Resident Evils with Seven. I've played some of the old ones with Remake. I got a buddy, Alex, and we were talking about games, and we both had a game on Steam that you can co-op the whole thing end to end. Resident Evil 5. Resident Evil 5. So I hit him up uh, a few nights ago, and I was like, let's start playing Resident Evil 5. So we played the first couple chapters of that game. I'm really liking it. It's very fun. It's mm. the combat of Resident Evil 4 and even a little snappier. Yeah. And it's co-op. And so it's, I would say it doesn't quite have the atmosphere and the story of 4 mm-hmm. and the inventory management's very dumbed down. It's just like you have nine slots and you just drop things in the slots. Yeah. Um, but I like it a lot. It's been a lot of fun. I'm still early, so I'll save my deeper thoughts about that probably for the next podcast when I finish it. But uh yeah, Resident Evil 5 is uh, very action-oriented. So it's maybe, like, suspenseful at times, but it's not scary. And it's not like you're going to save rooms and you're backtracking. It's like Gears of War. Like, level, level. It was at level. that time where it got more, a little bit more action Where to, But then I think it yeah. went, it, they had to scale back and had to take a step back and go, what are we doing with yeah. six? Yes. Six just went full-on action. I mean, went, I think zombies have guns at yeah, some point. Yeah, they went insane. Stuff. I'm going to, I'm playing all these at this point, so I'm going to play so six. You're going to play six? But I was going to say, when, when you finish four, if you want to, you would like five. I would co-op. Mm. It's kind of like the Halo type co-op. Okay. You just drop in and you play. It's fun. And you get like little grades at the end yeah, of every mission. It's cool. So Resident Evil 5, fun game. Um, let's continue the Resident Evil talk because yeah, let's they, uh, they, sh- they had a showcase of new Resident Evil news. Yes. And it included the Resident Evil 4 remake. We got a new trailer for that mm-hmm. that showed off a ton of stuff. 
And then we also got Resident Evil 8's kind of bonus DLC. Yeah, the, end of uh, end of winter, end of winters, end so of yeah, Eden's, something winter, uh, win- winter. Yeah, uh, but the and I guess that follows Rose, which I don't know anything about the story, or whatever. But, yeah, uh, follows the character Rose, but. They also added a third person mode, which I guess you can play the whole game now in third person. I'm I'm and pretty it, interested in and this. And that is awesome. I think that's really cool because I mean I actually it, just flipped Sony the double bird because I own Village on uh PS5 mm-hmm. and to get the DLC and I think the third person mode you got to like pay like a thing, like you really? pay like 10 bu- whatever. Uh for the DLC that makes sense but for the mode and then like the the stuff for seven, I had to pay for the upgrade, the visual upgrade recently. Oh. And I was like, you know what? I've already beaten seven, eight on PS4 or whatever, but there was a bundle for Halloween of uh, two, three remake, seven, and eight all oh. on Steam for like 40 bucks. I was like, I flipped Sony Double Bird. <laughs> I paid 40 bucks. It's like now I own them on PC. Yeah. I don't have to freaking pay for graphic upgrades and stuff. But third person mode looks awesome. That uh, Yeah, there was one part that was really cool where they showed, I had seen like there's a the big fat merchant guy yeah, yeah. And, then, and third person. He is ginormous. Like his head yeah. is like this big. Like, <laughs> uh, so playing that, I think that's just like really worth go- If you really enjoy that game, I, I would go back and play that in yeah. third person. I think I'm going to, I you're going to see in a whole different way. Yeah. And um, I would recommend that's one. If you want one of the little bit spookier, but not scary, scary eight has a couple scary parts, but third person helps mm-hmm. first person in those games. The scary stuff. I, I is, can't take it. There's I, a part. In I seven played the that, demo of eight and screamed on top of my lungs. I streamed it on Hangouts. Uh, and I was alone in the dark, and I was like, ah, I don't know if I can do this, guys. Like, I'm just screaming. That demo was creepy, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, I was screaming. The demo was scarier than probably the main game. But There's... they showed uh, 4 Remake, which, if you check out, every Thursday we do a Hangouts stream. It's called Hangouts. It's the name of the, uh, I don't know, stream series. But uh, I, str- I usually stream with Pierce and Matt. Uh, on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, we've been going through Resident Evil 4. From beginning to end. Um, having a good time, a really fun time playing that. And then we, we, we've been talking about the Resident Evil 4 remake, so perfect time coming into that. But, man, that looks freaking awesome. I think they did a great job. Like, we were we watched comparison videos on this last stream, so we'll jump over and we'll actually watch videos and stuff when we stream. And we pulled up those comparison videos and was just looking at, like, the giant. It's incredible. Or El Gigante or whatever his name is, the different, like, characters. And I was like, man. I like, was worried at first that they were going to go so different that yeah. it would so, not be the same scenario. So dark. But, but they, they didn't. I mean, they really, it's going to be new, but I, I'm i all in. I'm definitely going to get that. Matt, I think, said he had beat it like 15 times. He's beat <laughs> Resident Evil 4. Like, those guys are super into it, which they're having fun watching me because they're, like, watching me do the dumbest stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they're just, like, watching me, like, try to get through it and fumble through it. But uh, how far along are you now? Uh, I just got Ashley. Okay, okay, gotcha. I just got her, uh, and uh, she's like, once you get her, the tone starts to shift <laughs> a little bit. Well, I, I've, heard, I think notoriously, I think it's kind of annoying to guide her around. Yeah. I've heard so. Well, you, you have you gotten to where you stuff her in trash cans? And no, stuff? no. There's, I mean, spoiler, but there's parts where the all the villagers are coming out after you, yeah. and you have to put her like in dumpsters. But he basically sets her in there and just shoves <laughs> her head down and shoves her in dumpsters so you can go fight, and then you pull her out. It's pretty funny. Oh, I can't wait to shove this woman into a, into a dumpster. <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, that seems really cool. The graphics look awesome on it, and uh, I'll definitely play it for Hangout. Nice. But that is Resident Evil 4. Any more Resident Evil news? We talked about one. We, talk about? we talked about four. We talked about we every talked Resident about Evil. five. We talked about seven and Village. We've we've gone on a res- I mean, it's Spooky Month. I feel like on Spooky Month, you can talk even more about spooky things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had another game, and I'm sure you had games too, but maybe let's do the other horror franchise that on the same day did a keynote, the Silent Hill stuff. Yes. So Silent Hill, they showed off a bunch of stuff, didn't they? Like it <laughs> yeah. was like a, I, I couldn't even keep up. I was there's the, the, fifty. Silent but Hill what things. was the thing where I saw the screenshot and it made me laugh so hard? They were like. Why did they think they needed to green screen themselves standing in Silent Hill? Like, like the the directors were like green screen, yeah, and standing Silent. in like the foggy street. It made me laugh. Yeah. It was like it's cool, but it was like so much I time am, spent I on that. I'm just confused why they sat on the series for so long. I know Konami it's in weird. general kind of went through a 
uh, crazy thing when Kojima left. Yeah. And they just kind of sat. I felt like Silent Hill just, we haven't heard this in like 50 years. It's, well, what happened I, from my like perspective, I never played any of the Silent Hills. I've wanted to get into them, but I watched some videos about them. Silent Hill 1, 2, 3, and 4 were made by Team Silent, which is a Japanese studio. Mm -hmm. And after that, there was this weird push at Konami to have more Western developers develop their games. Mm -hmm. So they did other Silent Hills that were not received well, that were made yeah. by Western studios and European studios. And it had really fizzled out by, like, 2010. There mm -hmm. just weren't any more. And then the Kojima thing happened, which was a big mess with PT, and then mm -hmm. it never came out. So, I mean, maybe it's just been they don't know if they can do something that'll live up to those old ones that were really high, especially two, yeah. that were really highly regarded. But um, I think it's great. I, I want to get into this It's series, cool. It's finally so. back. So they're remaking two. Which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Why not one? But, like, why not start there? It's, but like, it's their most renowned game, yeah. but it is weird not to start with one. I start with one. You know? Maybe they'll do one if this one gets received. Well, maybe they'll go backwards. I don't know. Sounds like a Konami thing, going backwards. Yeah. But uh, they showed that. They showed Silent Hill F. <laughs> that trailer. That was, looked crazy. I I actually was kind of taken aback. Like this doesn't even look like a game. This looks like a weird artsy film or something. It's set in uh, the sixties. I'm I'm playing. So that. that looks really cool. Probably really spooky. Weird flowers. Flower and, girl. Yes, and face falling off, and that was very crazy. I'm all for creative stuff like that. It was very. Did colorful. they didn't they announce another Silent Hill project or somebody else? Yeah, was there was another. Um, Either it was like a visual novel type thing, yeah. or there was a third thing. They all had weird names, like Silent Hill Ascension. Yes, and, yeah. And, and I was watching a video that was like, nobody involved in making this game wanted to call this Ascension. Like, yeah. that was a marketing decision. It was a bad marketing decision. Yeah. But, but between that and the Resident Evil stuff, it was kind of like a mini, like, E3 this month. Because yeah. we also got Mario. We got to yeah. see the Mario trailer direct thing. <laughs> Which was wahoo, wahoo! This is a Mario. Um, <laughs> it's a me, Chris Pratt. <laughs> it's uh. Here's the thing, like all of these thirty year olds, me included, are on Twitter and we're talking about this, or it's like giving our thoughts. This is a kids movie, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it's a kids movie, and we're all like jumping on Chris Pratt. But at the end of the day, you're watching, yeah a film <laughs> catered towards children <laughs> like, yep. and not to mean like you can't go watch it, but it's like uh, a lot of uh, people my age were screaming. Who, who, which, who which, were people really looking for to voice uh, Mario in yeah. the children's movie? Yeah. I mean, but to, to be to my opinion on this, like watching the trailer, I think it looks really good. I think they did a good job of like distinguishing it from the games. Mm -hmm. uh, all everybody, like all the characters look good. Bowser, Jack Black is Bowser. Perfect. Sounds good. Sounds awesome. The dude, what's his name? Uh, something Day, I Charlie think. Charlie Day. For, as Toad? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I think that, like, it didn't sound, like, on the nose like the video game Toad, but it sounded like, you know, you could listen to it for the rest of the movie. Chris Pratt? <laughs> I think... It didn't help leading up all the articles we were sharing. It's like this it will change. Like yeah. when you hear this voice, it's going to be. It was. I have a theory. It was Jared Leto type stuff. Yeah. Of like they said, they said you won't believe his voice when you, you won't hear believe it. So, it. And that was months ago. I have a theory. What I think that they they backtracked. I think he was going to do Italian voice. Like was I, he? I and I think they got spooked because people are very sensitive these days, mm -hmm. and he's not Italian. So doing an Italian accent when he's not Maybe. Italian. Would have gotten blowback. I think that he was gonna do more of the, and I think that they talked. Oh, about it. they said, you know, hey, we're taking this one out of your if, hands, director. If that's he's doing an American voice, if that's true, I want the Chris Pratt cut because I, I think that because I want the Snyder cut of the Mario movie. When he first did the video, like a, two years ago or a year ago, that he was doing the movie. Mm -hmm. He said, it's a me, a Mario. That's how he did it. Yeah. And then But later, he was being funny. I know, but then later. But then that ended up being the it, voice. But then they were hyping it. Like yeah. they were hype. Well, no. So that's they, your theory. Okay. That's I think that they, they talked him out of it. Of yeah. like, hey, you can't Maybe. you're not Italian. You can't do an Italian voice. Okay. I don't know. I could be wrong. I I you want the uh, you want the uh, the Pratt cut? I want the Pratt cut. If <laughs> Pratt crut. Pratt crut. <laughs> Pratt crut just Pratt sounds cut. like 
That that's, stuff that, that sounds like your, something I don't want. That sounds like the <laughs> stuff that gets in your eye in the morning and you got to rub out. A the, Pratt crut. The Pratt crut. <laughs> um, if you want the Pratt crut as well, let us know in the comments. What else you been playing? Um, well, other than the Mario movie trailer uh, <laughs> that I've been playing. When you have breaks from watching that on repeat. <laughs> I have been playing The Last of Us Part 1 and the DLC, which I beat. Uh so I really freaking loved this. I think I loved this remake. I think people rightfully, I think even Pierce was like, I can't spend 70 freaking dollars. I'm not doing it. I said I that could, earlier. I'll do it later. I'm waiting. Yeah, and I get that, but this is one of my favorite games of yeah. all time. So I was like, I, I know like this is a lot. It's asking a lot. I got the freaking Firefly edition up there. So well, I, spent, I spent more than 70. If you have a close emotional connection to it, like the yes. way I feel about two, I might have done that. Yes. Yeah. I but this game, the the remake shocked me because at first, first impression was like, oh, they've changed like Joel's face and the facial animations. Tess looks totally different. Okay. And then more stuff came out. I was like, oh, they've, you know, the... The freaking um, uh, clickers look different. They've remodeled. I'm like, oh, they put some work into it. But after playing it, it is like huge changes to the point where the art design has been changed in this game. Yeah. Uh, so for reference, and I mentioned it and kind of showed it off in the Hangouts uh, or talked about it, pulled up the video to compare it. There is a part when you come out of the subway and in the original game, it looks like a restaurant with the red awning or something. And I didn't think anything of it. I just forgot about that. But people pulled up that video, compared it to that, to the remake. They remodeled that whole exterior and put, like, subway title on the back and, like, grown over. And it looks a million times better. Wow. To the point where, like, oh, because... When we look at, we've talked in the past of the Halo remakes, yeah, and how their art design is like what you can turn, you can actively hit the yeah. button and see what they did uh, yeah. with that, which is a cool feature. But it also shows it has no respect for that original yeah, no design, respect, no yeah. respect. Whereas this, when you pull up the video, they don't have the button or whatever. But that to what they did, and a ton of spots of this game is way better than the original. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, you like went in and really thought about like you got better at art design. And you like, can be, it can be different and still respect. Yes, the vibe. And, and I legitimately yeah. love this remake better than what they did. Not that I thought that was sucky. I didn't even yeah. realize some of that stuff. But wow, it brought it to the forefront. So of this like, is the definitive. Yes, version, it's the definitive the version. Um, they added like you have like the dual sense stuff. They added as well. Well, the AI is changed or smarter in this one. They were like getting me and some stuff that used to work in the old one did not. It, it felt like Last of Us Part Two's AI. They brought yeah. that over. But the one, another huge thing is when they're talking. There is parts when they're like talking. Uh, did I talk about Last of Us Part One already? Last uh, maybe I'm retreading a little bit. But go ahead. But they uh, there was cut. There's cut scenes where they're talking and yelling. And, like, Joel's yelling at Tess or, or something or whatever, a different character. And if they're, like, cussing or they're getting mad and, and, and tempers are flared, you can see spit now. Yeah. And the spit is coming out right when you would expect it. Like, when you're actually fighting with somebody, you could see that or whatever. And I was blown away by that tiny detail. because it, it to super granular super, details. Super, super detailed. So I was blown away. This is, it's so incredible. I freaking just, um, I, I loved how beautiful this looked. Uh, I had, I had Brad come over and he saw that on the television. He was just like, I cannot believe this. Look over here. Look at the leaves over here. And we were just like, oh, that has more, that has more, uh, overgrowth. Oh, you can tell over yeah. here. Like, so awesome time jumped right into left behind. Like I beat this and I was like, I am still ready. ready I liked left behind a lot. Yes. Yeah, so that's I just, the perfect DLC to me. It, it is my half, favorite DLC hours. I've ever played. It is like three to four hours of that. But, um, yeah, I freaking love left behind. That also has the upgrades and stuff, the graphical stuff, but of course, but, um, highly recommended. If you are a big fan of last of us, I know $70 is a, is a big ask and I'm not fighting anybody on that point, but for me, I, uh, it was totally worth it. I just have had a blast going back into that game and yeah. it's my third time through. And it it is a very, very, very good game. And a lot of people feel like it's mm -hmm. more, maybe the greatest game. It is so perfectly games, paced so. 
that like that's why I went straight into the DLC. It's like I cannot mm-hmm. like this was so perfectly paced. Every time you're about to get sick of something, it moves you to the next place. And yeah, I, I I don't think that seventy's not worth it. Period. I just think for me right yeah. now, as large as my backlog mm-hmm. is, to go buy a game I've already played. Yeah. But I think that's awesome. I'm yeah. really glad that you got that this year. That's in a year that didn't have a lot of games. It's nice that they did that. Yes. You know, for I for those that want totally to revisit. It. So we'll play The Last of Us Part Two, Part Two, Part Two, uh, Part Two, Part Two. Are you gonna Are you so, gonna play Part Two again? I thought about Last of Us Part Two a lot playing this game um, because I never felt and we have talked at length i mean there's a three-hour review on the channel it might be you four can check hours out. It's i think it's long. three or four hours we went and discussed we actually two. i'm proud of that review we talked about everything it goes in depth we we go through every character part of motivations game. yes everything like really it's, how you write stories i mean we yeah we really talked about and everything with that game we're, we're kind of on different sides on last of War, last of us part two but i really i do love parts of part two but I don't have the drive to return to part two still because part one, I know I'm going to play f- spring. I'm going to play fall. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But I know if I'm playing part two, I'm in there for 30 hours, whatever of a game. Like I am 30. I, I like to explore. I do like to explore and like go in the crevices and like get ammo. I'm picking up ammo. I got to find ammo and you got to do all that stuff. So that is the game of the generation. See, we're we're that game was, we're at odds a little game, bit. I want to go replay it right now. I just cannot sit down. It just felt like a a chore. I don't know to go through parts of that game. But something I like. Well, we're not talking about part two. We'll move <laughs> on. <laughs> Check out the review. We go at length with that. But that, I got one more game. You got one more game. I got one more game. You got one more game. I'll do mine. Do yours. I beat Yakuza Zero. Okay. Beat it. It's in the grave. It's, it's in done. the grave. That is, you want to talk about save files. I looked through, because you can just save, 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 save yeah. all your files in that game. I had saves 2017, 2018, 2019, oh my 2020, gosh. 2021. It was like, it was like you're, four years, You're a different years. person than what you were when you started it, the game. It, I have been playing this game. I, I, it's been like pre-COVID I was playing this mm. game. Um but you made it through. Maybe it was 18, I'm proud 19. of you. You did that and Resident Evil 7. Yeah, I did. And, yeah, and Batman Arkham City. I beat yeah. three games I had You're old defeating your on. past. Yeah, I'm defeating my past. Um, but th- that game took so long because <laughs> I played on my Xbox as one. And I just, if I'm grabbing games, I typically yeah. don't grab the Xbox You kind of went first. probably in real time with how that story's told a couple I, of years. I kind of <laughs> did, yeah. But... <laughs> I don't know. The dual protagonist thing was really cool, but it just felt like I was all. You want to talk about who's that? What's going on? I had to sticky like a a, a chart that told me all the different ranks and who's mm-hmm. what. The Shintumo clan and the yeah. du- Dujo clan and the Dojima. The Dojo clan. And, and and I'm just like, and they work for them, and who? And then they they're over these Dojo mm-hmm. and uh, Oni and. And it just was so much that I like the main characters. I felt like that game starts very slow. Mm-hmm. It takes a while to get going, and then it's really strong in the middle, and then on the back end, it, it just becomes very long cutscenes, a lot of talking. So mm-hmm. good game. It definitely gets a thumbs up. I got more. I, the other thing with that game is, is I didn't grow up playing beat-em-ups, mm-hmm. so it took me a long time to feel like I wasn't just You got to pick up mushing. bikes? Yeah, I started picking up bikes, bikes and-, and I liked Majima's fighting styles mm-hmm. much better with the bat and the um the beat beat or what do you call that where you're like twisting around on the ground oh, and dancing? Uh, beatbox, beatbox or, or, dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the most fun. I would just set it to that and just spin it like a tornado yeah. and just yeah, knock yeah. everybody around. So, um, I like it. I like Kiryu. I feel like. That may be a one of those a year. If if oh I, yeah, I, I have I couldn't Kiwami. play more than one. A year I I may I may check out if I'm getting the itch. I'll play another one. But I'm just kind of trying to reach this state of there's almost so many series to catch up on. I'm not going to make myself play a whole. They series kind of, of well the thing so. with the Hughes games is each one got bigger and bigger and bigger. Like it yeah. spread out like that that city or whatever. And then zero um, was the culmination. Yeah. So I think you you Kiwami's the smallest one. So. Yeah. Uh, of all those, even though it's still pretty big and, and a longer game, it's not it's not. Ginormous. I saw it was twelve hours, which 
Zero took me 34 hours. Yeah, I think it's more in a 16, 18 hour game, maybe okay. in that range. But um, yeah. I like the characters. Never, yeah. I like the vibe. It was fun. Um, glad I was able to close that one out. But anything else? You, what's next on your radar? Well, I, I hold on, I'll tell you. Real yeah, quick. what's what's? I want to know what's next. Are you you're going through and cleaning up your past? Games that have open save files that I intend to finish. <laughs> what's top on that list? I have. They're by uh by um device ps5 i got returnal and ghost of tsushima mm. i think after i finish resident evils i think i'm going to ghost of tsushima okay i think that's next i'm in the i'm, I'm at the start of the third act okay. or the end of the second act so mm. i'm on the down downhill on that ghost of tsushima returnal switch i got bowser's fury and shin Megami tensei 5 then PC, I'm doing the two Resident Evil. Is Evils. it Bowser's Fury or the Bowser's 3D? Fury. Or, okay, just Bowser's just, Fury. Oh, that that'll take you in after. Yeah, and then I got Cyberpunk <laughs> and Return of the Obra Dead. Now's the time to go to Cyberpunk. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe I'll go to Cyberpunk. Let's after. talk about Cyberpunk a little bit. I um, I actually booted that back up because they've done so many updates, and I watched the Cyberpunk Edge Runners that came out on Netflix. So for, well, I'll first talk about the anime and I jump back into the game afterwards because this anime was freaking awesome. So good. The mood, like the atmosphere, the mood, they nailed the games to the point where they use soundtrack from the game. They use sound effects that are found in uh, Night City and like, you know, like the walk, That's cool. walk, you know, the yeah. when you're at the crosswalks, they use that, all the different sound effects when people call and you're doing the like the calls with the um, like your eye. I forget what that's called or whatever. But yeah, uh, the the eye time instead of FaceTime. But um, very very good anime. It's by the same studio who did Kill a Kill, which I also love. Uh, studio Trigger is who did it. Art is awesome in it because I mean they've already did that. They did other animes I like, but highly highly recommend if you like cyberpunk. What are you doing if you haven't seen this yet? But yeah, uh, I recommend this. To everybody, I freaking and I put this in our group chat. Like this solidified. I already put eight billion hours into the Cyberpunk game, twenty seventy seven. But watching this anime just solidified that. Like, because people are like, "What do you like, fantasy better or sci like sci fi worlds?" And I was like, "I like Cyberpunk. Yeah. Like that is my vibe. Like yeah. that." That you can literally do anything, and in this anime, they're like one episode they're doing this, and this next episode you're like, wow, that's so creative and yeah. so like even, interesting. Even and, uh, when people, because it started as a tabletop RPG, I've always felt like if I'm going to do a tabletop, I want to do a cyberpunk one. Yeah, because that would be fun. It's so interesting. It's limitless possibilities, yeah. and it's uh, it's kind of um, dystopian and kind of dreary in yeah. some ways. So yeah. like. Uh, there's that aspect to it, but it's also like very just interesting to look at. Like you're, uh, it's like eye candy yeah. the whole time you're watching anime and the game. But I just love this hyper like new <sighs> well, world. So uh, I'm glad that you liked good story. Yeah, good, good story. It is very short. It's ten episodes. Um, it tells a story and it gets out, and it doesn't nice. say like to be continued or whatever. It is its own little standalone thing that's cool so uh you'll be in and out in 10 episodes really cool great soundtrack that they did um yeah. with that as well but uh yeah because part of me when i was getting towards the end is like I wonder if there's gonna be season two because i just want to keep you know this is awesome but they um <laughs> they won and done it i there's i don't think there's gonna be season two for that but well i booted that cyberpunk update up the other day and yeah. just messed around a little bit that game looks and plays yeah. so... I mean, I always loved the game, but it really looks smoother. There, the melee combat is So much smooth. So, yeah, that's what I did. After I watched anime, I was like, I am hungry for this. So I booted that up on my OLED and played some Cyberpunk. It runs so much better. Because yeah. I beat this thing when people were all... Everybody was complaining. That's when I was beating the game. Yeah. Uh, I was just pl I was playing through it. I think there was periods where I had to stop for a couple weeks till like, soft patches, like, little tiny patches were coming out because I couldn't <laughs> complete Quest. <laughs> but now is the time to jump in. Yeah. And I think Witcher 3 had a similar situation. You told me when we first started this, it was like, Witcher 3 went through this. Like, it kind of sucked a little bit yeah. at first. Like, yeah. there was glitches, all that stuff. But... Cyberpunk 2077, 
one of the most beautiful games I've ever. It's like, amazing. There is parts of that game, especially when you're like looking Blade at Runner. character animations and, and story moments, and I was just like, I was so sucked into that world, and I just, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, but they have cleaned up the performance stuff. Also, if you got one of the newer graphics cards that came out, there's DLSS 3 now. <laughs> so we have upgraded that, and I think you have to have, you have to have those new cards. But they also said, even if you have older cards, whatever is in there, that system kind of trickles down a little bit. There's some, mm. there's some uh, stuff that, that for DLSS one and stuff. But yeah, pretty fun. Awesome. I just played a little bit. I just kind of fooled around and jumped around a little bit in that. But that is Cyberpunk. I also played the No More Heroes trilogy this month. And I started... The whole trilogy? Well, here's what I did. I have played and beaten the first one on the Wii. When mm -hmm. that came out, that came out in 07. And at that time, I I was really anticipating, I was really hyped for No More Heroes 1 because it is from uh, Suda51. Suda I, get, I get sweary in Suda51. Yeah. Those names kind of blur for me sometimes. Suda51 also made Killer7. Which is, if you want to play the most Gonzo, unlike any other game you ever played, play Killer Seven. It you, I cannot compare it to anything I've ever played. And uh, so I was excited when I saw, oh, he's making a new game. There's a new game coming out. So No More Heroes is it, it came out on Wii. You play as Travis Touchdown, has this jacket. He has his own lightsaber. Basically, it's like a, it's like a, almost like a home built lightsaber. And you use the Wii to like smack it like enemies back then with the Wii remote. When you would get calls, it would come through the Wii remote. Like you would hold it up to your ear and it would come That's through fun. that speaker and stuff. So if he's holding it up in the game, it's like held up, like you hold it up and hear it. But um, really love that super crazy art style, super out there. It's those Japanese like developers, auteurs, like they're creating these crazy um, surreal worlds and stuff. So I had a blast with it back then. So what I did, I have a retro area in, area now, so I booted it back up, and I quickly, I, I still love the game, but it was like, all right, you need to like get money to go to the next fight because the whole premise of the game is you are trying to take down these other assassins. You're like a paid assassin, and you have to go through and fight ten assassins. It's like a, it's like kind of like a boss fight game. But in order to do that, you have to do these other like mini like fights with these enemies or mini games to like make money, <laughs> uh, and these like kind of side quests to it's make like a money. Shimmy so situation. the first thing I did, it was like, um, yeah, to do the next fight, you have to have this much money. And I was like, oh, I don't. And it's like you have to do side stuff around town. I was like, okay. I kind of look on how long to beat. When you're in your thirties, you're definitely looking at how long to beat. It's yeah. like we are not like I need to yep. see. So I was like, ah, it says ten. <laughs> Okay, I want to see what the, whatever. Let's start up because No More <laughs> Heroes three was coming out this you know this past month. So I booted it up, started playing. It and was like you need more money, and the first thing is like collect coconuts, and you literally are so slow. You you hit your lightsaber on this tree, you pick up coconuts, and the game's trolling you, and like you're picking up these coconuts, and you run over and you did this. It's like all right, you made three thousand. I needed like another. Uh, eight grand or whatever <laughs> of money. I made three grand from that. And I went, here's what we're going to do. I've already beaten this game. I, and I watched the cutscenes because people did say, they said this game does have story moments that are like, ah, like I remember that or whatever. So I watched all the cutscenes on YouTube and I've never beaten No More Heroes 2. Okay. So, I played through No More Heroes 2 for the very first time. And that game changed the art style. I give it a you can play it maybe, but I, I toughed it out. I was like, I'm going to beat this game. And I went through, I went from beginning to end with it. Um, still really fun. They did have like certain like assassins you beat in the first one or something's like, like came back and they rebuilt them or yeah. something, or they did something funny that they called back to the first one. And it's like, I'm glad I watched those cutscenes. Um, but I beat that one. That one's a whatever. You can play it. And then I just did a Hangouts 4, and I'm currently playing through No More Heroes 3 that just came out. I got that yeah. for PS5. I watched you play some of that. It looked cool. And the art style is awesome. It kind of reminds me, and I kind of said it during the Hangout, kind of reminded me of uh, the fourth e uh, Evangelion yeah. rebuild uh, movie. 
because it has this like hyper realistic like CGI. You'll see a lamp that looks like one to one real, but Travis Touchdown looks like an anime character walking around. So it, it's very cool. I really like the art style. So whereas the second one kind of changed the art style and it was kind of more muted, and I didn't like that. All those games around the early, like the late 2000s, early 2010s, muted and went brown. Yep. And they went, they really saturated the colors, and I hate that period. Yeah, Resident Evil Five has this like green uh, filter on yeah. everything, and I've I, seen people unfilter it with mods, and it looks really colorful. I don't nice. know what they were thinking. I hated that whole period and stuff, but they, uh, this one is more colorful and it's much more fun looking. I just want more colorful and just fun stuff. So, going through that feels great to play. Uh, in order to get save locations, like to let them use it, you have to, in all the other ones, you have to go to the restroom and he pulls his pants down and like these, they, they have like a sensor over it and that's how you save the game. And this new one, I went up to like at a porta potty and to go save. And the guy's like, ah, the porta potty's broke. And I was like, is this going to be a mini game? But I have to save. And what you do is you do a mini, mini game. Like you have to like plunge out <laughs> on the freaking, um, <laughs> Uh, the porta potty, and then you can save, oh and then, and then you from then on you can save. But like, <laughs> I was sitting there, and I was like, I just have to wrap this up for the night. I like but. when games just play with conventions and things you yeah. take for granted, that and that's what I like fun. about any Japanese games. Like they just go wacko sometimes with that stuff. But no more heroes. I'm just into that kind of goofiness. So awesome. That's what I've been playing. So you got reconnected with an old series. That's fun. Well, what have we not talked about? What have we not talked about? We've There's not other... talked about some news or some more video game news. Stadia is going to shut down. Stadia is announced that it was shut down. It is announced that it's going to shut down. But it is being shut down. Yes, but it'll be shut down next year. For those that want context, this has been a sore. This has driven, you know, there's two CEOs, but there might be just one next <laughs> podcast. Yeah, there will be one CEO <laughs> next podcast. <laughs> Hello, guys. I'm here. Um, no, uh, if you go back to December of 2019, and if you look at our Twitter as well, I mentioned it, we had a bet. Now, we are in disagreement on this bet. There is there's some there is some uh, wiggle room that I want to give myself. Well, we're not in disagreement about the bet. We're in disagreement of whether or not you get credit for being close and you don't. So because you're not right. I will just I'll plead my case the most non biased way. But you're editing this, so you're gonna. Uh, I'll, you're like I'll Elon. You're gonna ban who you want to ban. And let, you're let me let me make it. let me make my case because it's actually just more basic. Okay. Yeah. You just Here's say my yours. Case. Give it the bullet points. In December, whatever year that was, we were talking about Stadia. Yes. We were disagreeing about how long it would go before it would be shut down. Yes. We decided a good over-under would be three years. Okay. So I said, from launch, it would make it three years. Zach said, from launch, it would be shut down before three years. That Correct. Was, that Correct. Was, and the bet was, That's what I we're bet in three years from launch, it would not be shut down. Shut down yet. Zach bet three years from launch, it would be shut down. Three years is this November, so it hasn't happened just yet. It'll be soon, though. They announced earlier this year in October they're going to shut down, but they announced that it's being shut down in January of 2023, which would be 60 days after the three-year anniversary of launch. So it will shut down after three so years Travis and 60 is, days. So, your argument... So my You're, argument is I bet the under of three years, and it's going to still be active. And my argument years. is that when I said that, okay, three years, they announced within that three years we are shutting down. But it's and, not shut down. And hold on. Here's my bullet points. My other bullet point is, okay, we are shutting this down. So I got within that three years. They're shutting it down. I got that. No, that but, that, that, no, that, that, no. that happened. That, but that Zach, happened. Zach, but that wasn't the bet. The buzz, bet wasn't when would they announce. Second bullet. The bet was, will it be shut down? Second bullet will point it? is I can no longer buy anything off the store. The you store, were never buying anything off the store But anyway. what I'm saying is I can no longer buy anything if I wanted to. But that's this, been shut down. But we weren't talking about this. We said, will the service be active so that's been shut down. shut down so my here is my where i'm coming from and you put in the comments yeah i'd love to know <laughs> please put in the comments i want people to dukes out and let us know 
whose side are you on? Because my argument is this. I got the announcement that it was shutting down. The store is shut down. Uh, it isn't shut down. They're rolling out the shutdown, and it's finally shut down January, which is after the three years, technically. No, by, it's literally after the three years. By the, <laughs> Not technically. It's literally after the three my years. My argument <laughs> is if, if, this, if this was switched... I and we didn't have money on the line. That's an, another important factor. We didn't have money. No, but you treat. We didn't every, have money. A bet. Is, we didn't have money on bet. this bet. No, so would you? Would you pay me if we had money? If, yes. Okay. Then that's because, all you need no, to know no, because be, you're. But, no, but because whether it's a dollar or a thousand been, dollars or zero, if if we would have put money, I think we would have been much more, even more descriptive on this. No, I felt like no. I was. I I've felt like I bets. I've paid money out to people. When for I less said three years, I was like, yeah, in three years. But when I saw, oh, they announced the shutdown no, and it's in January, no. I was like, oh, we that's said, a, I say, give me wiggle room, Zach, and I got it. Zach, you don't. I. Get you don't I get to I claim a vague three years. It's an over under bet. So no, I was looking. It's over three years. Under. I got three years too. I had over three years. You had under three years. You. There's a line in the sand. You picked your side. I picked my side. Choose my side's going to end up being correct. Choose it's over. Choose who you think. Do you think? Yeah. Choose. Do you think uh, it's a give me? Even better. Uh, on the three-year anniversary of Stadia, if I'm in the country, because I might be out of the country, when I get back from being on vacation, I'm going to stream from Stadia. Let me know in the comments on the stream from Stadia after the three-year anniversary. Also, my argument is, if this was switched, I would troll you, but I would say you got it. No, no, no. I'm, but no. I would say you got it, though. But that would I be would incorrect. troll you and say, guess you didn't get but it. But this is where you're but disingenuous, I would, But Zach. I would give Zach, it to you. Zach, no, that's so incorrect. Number one. Do you think I wouldn't no, give it to you? No, I wouldn't want you to because I don't have it right. But, I wouldn't but I would be asking you. you to. But so this is where you think close is good enough. When you I, make a bet, it doesn't matter how the close you are. The announcement was within three years. But the bet wasn't years. when would they announce it. The Hey, here's an announcement. The Mario movie's coming out. Can I fucking watch the <laughs> Mario movie? No, because it's not out. But... They've announced I it, got but the it's not out. Of the shutdown, and I can't use a store. Would you give that to me? No. Put it in the comments. The, this, your if only it, compelling point is the store, and I understand that. If anything, you would call that a draw. But you're you're trying to say you won. You didn't win. Call it a draw if you're going to call it a draw. But the store piece wasn't the bet. The bet was you would call well, it a draw. Would you call it a draw? You don't seem like you seem like you. Won. I would. I would compromise. You're looking for I, any. No, way no, to... no. I would compromise. <laughs> I would compromise to a draw so we can mo leave because there's we have not known peace in our house since this has started. I would call it a draw because of the the vague gray line of the announcement and the store shut down and then it's happening so close to that. The barrier. announcement isn't compelling at all, Zach. I could announce the announcement is compelling. No, announcements are not compelling. The only uh, if you just throw the announcement out, you got to let the announcement. Go. I would call it a draw because the because store technically, front, technically the whole thing is not shut down. So so let's call so let's do this. I don't care about the announcement. I will not accept a draw if you're still talking about the announcement. <laughs> you have to let the announcement go. <laughs> so what's the draw? Why are you giving me the, the draw? So no, what, what's the point? I would be me? interested in offering a draw on these <laughs> grounds. The store shut down before. But I, as a customer, can continue to play after. Okay. That is a gray area yes. on the three-year line. That's what that is that where I am, and, and I am, I am fine with that also because the store was shut down maybe thirty days before the anniversary. But the service will be shut down sixty days. Yeah, the after. full thing. So there's a ninety-day range yes. where we are both correct. But you got to stop with the announcement. But uh, I didn't admit the announcement. The announcement no, you. you have to announce the announcement. But irrelevant. the announcement, you have to. Can you at least admit? I, <laughs> the announcement is like we are shutting down. The announcement, okay, came within the. Three if years, I'm at a bar, you don't like the announcement, and they announce, "Hey, hey, uh, kitchen's closed, <laughs> kitchen's closed," and the bar, the bar stops serving drinks at one thirty, but the bar closes at two, right? Yeah. What time's the bar close? But what time does the bar but I close? Can, and if we have a bet that the bar will not be closed before two o'clock, who wins the bet? 
here's the thing. The bar closes at two. And the, Stadia shuts but up. If I'm I, offering you a draw, but you gotta accept. You gotta say the announcement means nothing, and you gotta accept the draw. The announcement <laughs> means no, something. It no, mean no, anything. The war it continues. Mean the anything. war continues. I'm offering you a I, gift. I feel like Russia and Ukraine. We can't come to a conclusion here. All right, let's move on. This is uh, share in the comments. The war continues. Put in the comments. Stadia. Should we accept the? Should I accept the draw? Should I sign the papers? You should sign the peace. So I, I sign the peace. This treaty. is the best deal you're gonna <laughs> get because <laughs> it's not gonna last. But I think the war may continue on. So oh, we'll God. see what happens. Oh. We came close. Well, to peace. I just do want to make a note in our group chat. This has been discussed. Jacob sided with me. Kenny sided with me. Zach Campbell sided with me until you offered him a TV. I got him a TV. And then he said he was neutral. He's neutral now. So you had to give somebody a TV. And then an independent third party who I had no opportunity (laughs) to brief. You asked the independent third party and told your weird ass story about all this announcement. I was talking to his wife. The third party. No, the the third party. His wife. The third party guy who is a gamer, Chancho, said in no uncertain terms, you lost the bet. But I. We you have, told my wife half the story, and she came home. I had to tell her, you've been corrupted. And I, I, told corrupt, her, I, I didn't corrupt as well. I just told it like it your was. Your wife's gone. <laughs> I can't help her. I. She said, well, he was close. But, I said, okay. She's like, I want to give it to him because he was close. It made me so mad because wife, here's the deal. If you're going to feed him, you're taking married. it off my plate. If, we're married. If you feed him the win, I'm losing, and I'm technically right. So the war continues. The war continues. If the you won't accept the draw, I'm offering you a draw. I, I'm being so gracious. The, the, <laughs> I don't even have maybe to. Maybe I'm being gracious because, you know, maybe I was really close. Okay, so. Xbox canceled some something, <laughs> so we don't even have to bet on how long this will last. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even... We did mention that. I was like, well, there's one you have to be a bet there. Uh, Xbox. They Has something showed... ever been canceled that wasn't announced? Yeah, this, this was th- this was a weird announcement because there was rumors of a streaming Xbox stick. So we've talked at I think every single podcast this year has we've mentioned something about streaming. Yeah. Uh, the last time it was about the GeForce thing on my TV, streaming all this stuff. They have rumored an Xbox, like you just stick it in and it's just a stick you stick in your TV and you just play through Game Pass and you just stream all the games. That was just a rumor. It was never talked about. And then they did some, I don't know if it was a stream or something, a big thing when they show, what's his freaking name? Uh, I freaking forgot his name. The guy with the black hair. That's that's. Uh, oh, Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer. <laughs> I blanked on his name. <laughs> Phil Spencer... It's been notorious. Like now, it's like kind of a meme thing. He'll put stuff on the back of his shelf during his, yeah. his Zoom calls, and the thing that was there was something they had rumored. I think there was even a leak to like kind of like uh, somebody sketched this thing out or drawed it or whatever. Xbox Keystone was like the code name, and it was on his shelf. It was like there. That looks just like the render that somebody put out. That is it. So it was like, oh, is this thing still coming? And they came. I was like, that has been canceled. So the thing that was never officially announced, they canceled it before they actually officially ever announced the thing. Mm. So the cancellation came before the announcement uh, ever did. It's weird. I Like my buddy Sam, he got one of those new TVs that has the Xbox app on it. So you yeah. don't need the stick in that situation. Mm-hmm. Theoretically, if any of these TV manufacturers just give you the app, you don't need the stick. Mm-hmm. But also it makes sense to sell a stick because it's something you can buy on the shelf and the mom can take home to her kid and it's like arbitrary there's still a lot of 1080p tvs and stuff that cannot be updated with that xbox app or whatever that like hey if i can just plug that in yeah i think it's a miss it's kind of a a a hardware patch to your tv to where you can play that just like if you get a roku stick or something for those older tvs like i I don't know why there are tons of people that are still getting those sticks i feel like it'd be smart to do that for that gap between people getting a new TV. Because once you get a new TV, like recent TVs, you can get all these apps and the Xbox yeah. app, and I can get all this stuff on my new TV I just got. But, um, sorry, Siri. But, um, yeah, I thought I thought that would be a... W- w- Maybe I they know. canceled it because they couldn't think of a name. Yeah. The X Xbox 2. Yeah, that would have been the Xbox 2. <laughs> Xbox 360. X stick. And they spell it 360. Yeah. Xbox Series stick. Yeah. <laughs> Series S2. S, series, series S, S2. stick. Yeah, but uh, that's Yikes. no longer here. But 
So I got canned. And then uh, we have some Bayonetta 3, which I just uh, got. Here's the thing. <laughs> I have been complaining for months about, like, Switch, man. I can't wait for them to make a freaking new whatever. I had to rearrange stuff because I have so much Switch. Switch. You have a whole shrine. I have a whole Switch thing. Ooh, so that Metroid Dread is nice. So for as Ooh. much as I've complained about Switch, I sure buy. I have the N64 controller, which people are having a trouble getting right now. But I just got the Bayonetta 3, the freaking uh, Masquerade edition down there. I have not opened that up yet. I'm going to play that soon. Love the Bayonetta series. But there was, I don't know if you heard about this, there was some... Oh, uh, yeah, I heard. There was some controversy Drama. going on. And it is a good example to just wait things out till you hear both sides. Yeah, I had bad vibes about this immediately. Yeah. It was uh, very one side. Whenever someone comes out and says, boycott the game yeah. because of what happened to me... And it's not like they were abused or anything. It's just like they felt like they, I don't know. I yeah. was like, this seems kind of So for those not in the know, uh, Frick, what's her name? Something Hell? Hale or something? Jennifer Hale? Hale? Or, I could really be messing this up because no, well, Jennifer Hale might have been something. Repl- Hale yeah. replaced her. Yes. Or Hale is the original? Or the Jennifer Hale might be the one. She's that, the one that replaced her. That replaced her. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. Now, Jennifer Hell is interesting because she did she does a lot Meryl and Metal yeah. Gear and stuff, so she came on to do that. But the person that... <laughs> I forget the freaking name. If you want to look that up while I'm, I'm talking about it. it. Um, the voice actress of Bayonetta is not coming back for three. She was not in three. So people were like, what's going on? What happened? And she came out on Twitter with a video and said... They only offered me four grand to do this role, which is crazy. Helena That's Taylor. Helena Taylor. Yep. And Jennifer Hell is who replaced her. Yeah. That's what happened. So Helena here. Uh I only got paid four grand, offered four grand. So offered I didn't four take grand. It. So she said, boycott the game. But did you hear her counter offer? Uh, wasn't it like a hundred of six? Yeah. Figures. Th- so she six said, figures. boy, sorry, I'm jumping at it. She said, boycott the game. They only offered me four grand. Well, so then everybody's like, oh, we're not... To, to me, like... Okay. Now, I think why people jumped on is because it is a problem in the industry. These voice actresses and actors... Yeah, they're underpaid. They're getting screwed. So I think it was a perfect storm of, like, not hearing the other side, but we already know they get screwed, so it was believable. Her you know count- I mean? Did you hear her counter offer? It was, like, seven figures with, like, uh, royalties. Yeah. Which is I, I, never... Was it seven figures? I think it, it was six. Maybe it was six figures six with figures, royalties. But that's still a lot for, you know, yeah. whatever. But um, she came out and said that people freaking jumping on everybody. Kamina, who uh, is the as Platinum works at Platinum, uh, notoriously will just uh, ban people or uh, ban people from his page or whatever. He came out and people were mad at him because he was just like, hey, when you... He said something like... Uh, people will see the truth or they don't know both sides, whatever it was. And then he, I think he shut down his account for a little bit till it all blew over quickly. It came out, um, because Jason Schreier or whatever, like did some digging, whatever, and found out that it was four grand per session. Yeah. A little bit different than That's four different. grand because four grand overall is you're throwing pennies. At yeah, somebody. absolutely. But four grand for each session and there was five sessions. So, 20 grand overall, maybe that's still underpaid in terms of yeah, whatever the I payment. Don't, I, don't I don't know. I don't know how it. long a session is if it's eight, I don't know eight all, hours yeah. or. I don't know overall what they should be paid, but 20 grand sounds a lot different than four is the yeah. thing. So uh, people had a lot of pie on their face. Um, and they did a follow-up story and I think she just still kind of is dodging that original thing that she yeah. had said, but when you come out that disingenuous, I even think if you came out and said it was four grand per session and that's what you originally said, that might've been perceived differently yeah. than lying and saying yeah. it was four grand. Yeah. Total. If she would have even said that 20 grand, maybe. Yeah. I think you might've, she been... might've still gotten some people back and they're like, maybe yeah. that's too low, but, and I think they yeah. really wanted her because she does an incredible job, but it's like, I think she was, uh, you you want you you want a little bit too much there because uh, yeah because they really wanted to work with her it sounded like because they were like they tried to make it work but when she countered with six figures it's like goodbye like 
Yeah, that, when you're do. talking to 20 grand for yeah. four sessions and then it's like, I want six figures in royalties. It's yeah. like... Uh, you're, you're not even the same ballpark. Yeah, so yeah, different planets. Uh, Yeah, so I'll be playing Bayonetta not as that voice actress now with Bayonetta. Do, do you, have you, oh, I guess you haven't played it yet. So I haven't played it yet, but I've heard this is the best one. People <laughs> are saying like... <laughs> That's the thing when people were saying boycott. I did see even after like we knew the full story, people were like, people are saying this is the best one. Like all the <laughs> early previews are saying, this yeah, is- it's not. I don't. To me, it was odd. She seemed in tune with the fan base, so she felt like she could say boycott it. Yeah, and the fan base likes her, but also. Bayonetta fans are not like the kind of people that are going to be like, yeah, there's a hundred other games to scratch this itch. I just won't play it because the voice actress is upset. Yeah. Like, uh, the people that want to play Bayonetta are going to play it. Yeah. They might say online, oh, I'm not playing it. They're playing that. Like, yeah, it's like telling a from software fans don't play the new yeah. from software games. Like they're going to play it. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what you say. And I don't even mind the boycott thing, but if you are going to boycott something, let the other side say their point and then boycott it if you yeah. still want to. Don't, uh, yeah. The internet just has created this the, really dangerous. I mean, it's always been that way. Do boycotting since, games ever really work? The only one I can think of is Metal Gear Survive. People, and it was boycott slash apathy of I don't want a non Kojima. That was one. more apathy, I but, think. But that anything. one, people are saying, don't play this to, def- to for Kojima, yeah. and uh, nobody played it. Yeah, I think that didn't. If that game was good, though. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if people are like, oh, they would. They would get off. But yeah. I think that game yeah. was an easy boycott because it's like uh, I don't want to play it anyways. Because yeah. all the stuff was coming out that was bad. Yeah, it's hard to boycott a good game. Maybe that's what it is. But maybe that's what it is. Is what it is. But it's what that it is. is. It's all our news. I think video we got games, some, some TV and movies, right? Yeah. You talk about cyberpunk. You had another TV show. Yes. Uh, uh, this is a TV show slash documentary TV show. That I have seen previously. I watched it. Uh, it's like six years ago, seven years ago. It is called Odyssey: The Story of Film. It is a how many freaking episodes is it? It's freaking nine plus hours, ten hours or what? It, actually, it might be like closer to fourteen hours. Um, it is a multi like episode. I think each episode is like an hour and thirty minutes, forty minutes or whatever. They're long. They go from the beginning of film to the, like, when this was made in 2011 to, like, the early 2010s. Wow. And they talk about the history of film. Like, here is where movies started. Oh, that's cool. And here was, like, how we, like, they figured out how to make film. And, like, you know, and here was the the first directors. And, like, figure it's so, so for me, that's, like, a film buff. I love, 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 love this documentary. So I'm watching it again because I've been dying for that same director to make like a follow up to talk about the 2010s up to the early 2020s. Like I want to see that. And I Googled it and sure enough, last year he came out with a movie, a standalone movie. It's like three hours long and he catches up to like stuff. Um, And like, it talks about like movies during COVID and like what's happening with movies and COVID and stuff and theaters. Where, where was this at? Where'd you watch this? Um, It's called the story, uh, Odyssey, the story of film, but where's it streaming? uh, I downloaded it. it. Oh, oh, okay. (laughs) I don't know how you could even get this now. (laughs) So I don't even, cause it's such an old show, but um, older show, but um, Highly recommend checking that out. If you can find the streaming service, you should check it out. I just don't even have an answer to where that could go. You really put me on the spot there. <laughs> you even tried to bypass it. You were like, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was going to try to keep talking, but it's like, I can't. He downloaded it from the streaming service where yeah, you can download sh- things. Yes, and- that's what I meant to say. Um, where you pay a subscription. Yes. But very interesting. My wife, I've been driving my wife nuts because it is all narrated and he just shows footage and he'll show footage from like, if he's talking about Japanese films in the 30s, he'll show Japan and like shots of Japan and people like, and then the movies and then he'll talk about the movies. His voice, he's like Irish, I guess, but I can do his voice one-to-one and like I watch, because I'm, hearing this guy for like 10 plus hours or whatever i'm like 15 plus hours actually is what it's closer to i can his voice is like this in the 1920s in the 1930s 
cinema changes. It's new. It's exciting. So, like, uh, I think the first time I watched it, Chelsea was, like, coming in and out of the house. And she was like, how do you listen to this guy's voice overnight? Like, I, I just, it's so just boring sounding or whatever. But I was like, I love this. So, yeah. um, she'll get up to get some, like, a girl. She gets up out of, like, she, they'll show, like, a movie clip and he'll talk over it. And it's, like, a clip from the 1920s, this movie. And it's like, a boy sees a girl. A light hits her face. She gets up. She smiles. The boy laughs. It's cinema. It's new. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that's the whole thing. So, highly recommend that. And I uh, am excited to get to the newer stuff that I hadn't seen yet. But, nice. definitely recommend Story of Film. Catch it wherever you can. <laughs> Just watch it. Just Google it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It might be well, some UK exclusive, like on BBC. I, I wonder like. in the story of film, did he happen to talk about Rob Zombie's Halloween? Uh, Yeah. The, he spends a whole two hour episode on that. <laughs> he just watches it. Yeah. There's a boy. That's a boy. He's very upset. He cusses a lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's blood. <laughs> we watched Rob Zombie's Halloween, and yes. that was a uh, transformative experience. So we might have mentioned it before. Every Halloween, we do talk about a new Halloween because for our Halloween parties that we put on with our friends, we watch one Halloween movie a year. We are now to the point where we are at the first Rob Zombie Halloween that came out in 2007 we watched. Yeah, so the that's the ninth one we've watched, yeah. Yes. Um, and... So we've watched a lot of Halloween films. We have. And this is a new director this time, uh, Rob Zombie. Dragula. <laughs> burn through the witches. And burn so through. <laughs> uh, very edgy film. Very. Very, very edgy film. Very This edgy might film. be the edgiest thing I've ever watched. Uh, I would agree. Like, it defines that 2007 grungy, yes. edgy, dirty attitude yes i think this just is right before the 20 piss and vinegar it just <laughs> the makes you want to take hit. a shower after yeah, the 2010s we took a shower from all this stuff Ugh. um but late 2000s was the last uh hurrah for some of this stuff and uh, man very violent very um uh brutal brutal the michael myers in this is huge that is one of the best parts about this movie. yes he's he he's is so big a, a menacing uh, Michael Myers. Most intimidating one by far that they've had. Um, not the kid version, the, the big one. But but that's the weird part about this movie is the first 40 minutes is a, a kid. kid. But And I've never seen that in any of the... Well, they show like a second. They've shown like maybe 20 minutes in the yeah. past. But we get like a longer extended thing showing the kid and like what happened to him to make him this way. But uh, it was a good time. It wasn't a good movie, I don't yeah, think, no. but uh, very disturbing in certain parts. Some of the stuff was like, uh, but um, it. F so I was talking with my wife about it after. Yeah, I liked that beginning. I mean, yeah. it, it was gross, and I think that the dialogue was really odd. But like, I got what he was going for in the beginning. Yeah. Um, it was this kind of lower socioeconomic commentary yeah. and the system fails these kids. All this kid was kind uh, Brad of gave it the name. Brad, who's a humongous Halloween fan, our friend Brad, he said this is white trash yeah. Halloween. It is. And it is. It is. Down. And they it's really just... delve into that, what the white trash culture kind of is and how yeah. it can really take a kid that already has some violent leanings and push them over the edge. So I got that. I didn't. L I still thought it wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah, but, it's not a, but I understood. But. but a weird thing happens in this movie where after you know the first fifty minutes, it time jumps, mm -hmm. and then it tries to be a retelling of this you know upper middle class kind of family and yeah. what's going on with them. And I found it was almost like Rob Zombie didn't know how to write those people, so he just also wrote them as weird and saying gross things. <laughs> just like, well, that's it, Rob Zombie's writing. It was in like general. he didn't know how to write middle class. There was an opportunity I felt to juxtaposition and have them be very sweet and clean yeah. and squeaky. And this girl is very clean and squeaky. And then Michael Myers comes in with his rough life, and mm -hmm. he could have made the lower socioeconomic stand out more from the upper class. But the upper class people have really vulgar language. Language. This girl's talking to her mom. She's like, something, yeah. you know, so, you know, just talking about like genitalia, like, just being like 
not even just teenager. Like, really, I don't think a girl would talk to her mom that way. And like, an that's how class. Rob Zombie does dialogue. It, it's yeah. always that gritty. And, and that's it, how Rob Zombie. It was like he didn't know how to s- smooth it out for the middle class sections. <laughs> he so only just, knows. He only knows being yeah, super gross this. and vulgar. I'm yeah. So I just felt like it, it kind of whiffed on that. I also felt like Michael was very well developed. Um, I felt like the the his little sister who ends up being Laurie Strode, she wasn't developed at all. I don't give a, I didn't give a frick about mm-hmm. her. Yeah, I don't. You didn't spend any time with her, um, and that's where this movie was almost done a disservice by feeling like it needed to be a remake of the first one in the second half. Yeah, first half feels completely removed from the original, mm. and the second half try, is like they tried to condense the whole first movie into half of a movie yeah. so it had problems other than that it wasn't i think i gave it two and a half i think that's, i saw you gave the same yeah, thing that's it it, yeah, that's it, it had enough competent things that was like there's something here but um it was entertaining it was it was entertaining for, for to what watch we do every group. year for, yeah, yeah for in a what group we do. for what we do in a group if i ever soloed these movies i would probably more be more sour on them mm-hmm. but because we're just all dressed up in costume watching these and stuff yeah just whatever but. i would not i wish that this would be his only one i'm kind of bummed that next year it's another one it's another like, and oh i heard God. this one's worse i heard this one's worse i i was so intrigued i actually read interviews about mm-hmm. halloween his halloween too yeah. and he said in one of his interviews he felt like his Halloween one was so watered down that he wanted to make it so much more extreme. Oh, well, and I'm, so well, he I'm said happy. More grit, more violence. I think he even said more piss. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I got to find this finally. article. So That's what it needed. I read that after having just watched this yeah. dirty-ass movie, <laughs> and I was like, what is he possibly yeah. going to do? But there is a counterculture on that movie of people that feel like it deconstructs Halloween, mm. and there are people that like it. I okay. even saw some people say it paved the way for some of the A24 movies that have come out, oh, which wow. is like shocking to it me. Opens up I gotta see this to believe it. Um, so we'll see. We'll Rob see Zombie got so gritty at, that people are like, "It's time for A twenty four. Let's start a studio on this guy." Uh, yeah. So I'm actually interested in the one that just came out. No, is Halloween ends, and I'm actually extremely excited for that one. It's going to be four years. I we'll be, I'll be a different guy when I. I watch was it. telling one of my one of my buddies, I was like, "Yeah, I'm excited for that one." They're like, oh, you want to watch those? No, 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 no. no. I, I watch these every year. Yeah, and he was like, "But." He was doing the math. He's like, "Which one are you on?" I said, "That's you won't watch it for, for yeah." Five that's what, that's more what years. Brad said. It's like Brad was like was saying, "It's gonna be four <laughs> years till you watch it." And I was like, so "I like, know, but this is what I do. We ha- we've we've stuck with it for so long. We <laughs> I can't, can't change can't, it now. We cannot change it now." So, <laughs> but Halloween ends. What's interesting? The only the critique I keep hearing is that, uh, and I'll forget about this in four years. But like. Michael Myers is not in it a lot. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I keep I read. hearing. But I'm excited for that because yeah. it, it's funny. Go crazy with they it. They even, Danny McBride, when they were writing all this, like, and he has a team like, with him, but um, I, I know that he's worked on it. The title cards are one to one, the title cards in the original Halloween one, two, and three. So when they got to Halloween ends, it's that same font oh, as Season cool. of the Witch, even. Like that's they cool. actually kept all that stuff. I'm so excited pe- for People this. are actually kind of like comparing, like, oh, one kind of does this, and then two is similar to two and that. And then three, because it's so different, they're comparing it to Season of the Witch of like, because that wow. was that one was so gonzo from what that's it was. Wild. So we'll we'll get back to you in four years. Put that on your calendar. But happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Right? I think that's it. That's, right. that's all our stuff. We ended it on Halloween. We started with spooky stuff. We started with spooky. We ended with spooky. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, I do stream. I've been playing through Resident Evil 4. I'm going from beginning to end with that game. Sometimes we watch... Um, Pierce had me watching um, some old guys rapping. We'll just jump in and do goofy stuff sometimes and chat. We'll chat with you. 7 p.m. Eastern every Thursday. Check that out. Check out the new mall video. If you want to see an abandoned mall. And every month we do these podcasts. We do. Once a month. But that has been our spooky, spooky podcast. And now I'm going to do the scariest thing I've ever done. I'm going to talk about the 1940s of horror. It's Dracula. He gets out of his coffin. Blood drips down from his mouth. 
He sees a girl. He bites her. It's cinema. It's exciting. Boo! <laughs> Have a good night or a good day. <laughs>